shattered dreams. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so it was a bit clickbait here. Yeah? Shattered dreams. I was thinking, hey, I'll have a hundred people here today. <laughs> Oh, those were online, yes. Those were online shattered dreams. Now we're going to that shattered dreams. Uh, okay, so let me see because there's, there's the content and there is how we deliver it, yeah? So how do I summarize? Number one, Genesis chapter 38, not just 37. Genesis 37 verse 1 to 11. Uh, if you don't have a Bible, that's the story of Joseph. <laughs> that's the story of what? Joseph so you know the story of Joseph the story of Joseph begins with Abraham at least <laughs> in, the, in the flesh Abraham has a son called Isaac Isaac has two sons called what? Jacob and Esau or Esau and Jacob and then Jacob has what? 12 sons yeah? 12 sons and two adopted sons Manasseh and Ephraim <laughs> Jacob was, uh, was very interesting. Anyway, so the story of Joseph is a story I think I want us to use as an analogy or as a, as a, as a picture. I normally say if you have a spiritual principle, you must also have a spiritual picture. Because sometimes we do not know how to interpret some particular things unless we're given pictures. Our imagination eye has to be opened up. There are some things you know as truths or principles, but sometimes we are not able to access them because you, don't, you can't imagine that that thing can happen. Yeah? <laughs> so here we are. So when you're talking about the principle of dreams or the principle of pursuing particular things called dreams or ambitions or visions, we have Joseph as the picture that God wants us to view today. Yeah? So I want to use the story of Joseph as that reference point. Uh, I'm sure you've heard a lot of things about Joseph. Yeah? Some of you have acted in plays as Joseph. <laughs> some of you look like you acted as Reuben. <laughs> and some of you look like you acted as what? Benjamin. <laughs> or the actor formerly known as Benoni. It's called Benjamin. <laughs> you know? So that is where I'm coming from. And you know the story. Joseph had what? Two dreams. Yeah? <laughs> By the time they were crossing the, by the time Jacob was crossing the Jordan to go back, and he was running away from his father-in-law, his two wives, two concubines, and eleven sons. Joseph was what the eleventh son. Benjamin was not born. Benjamin was being told much later. He did not know how he ran away. <laughs> That's for another day, Benjamin. You know. <laughs> so when they're on the other side, God had already prophesied something, and God is very interesting. Uh, he had prophesied to Abraham. That these people, you have a son, this son is going to be a son who will produce the prototype or a template that will produce what? A nation. Mm -hmm. Then this nation at some point will go into what? Captivity. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that? Mm -hmm. So these guys went into captivity in quotes when they were only, I think, around 72 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Clear? Yeah. So that's, now that's the end of the story. That's the end of the Joseph story. <laughs> so, but how did it begin with? Had, so see, God, is, God wants to transfer a whole nation into his, into his purposes, but he's reliant on the dreams of one person. So let's go slowly on this one. This one has to be a bit surgical, yeah. because some of you are thinking, this is my dream, my, my mission, my purpose. Mm -hmm. saying, Duh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe I was thinking it's about a whole nation, but let's give him time. Let's give her time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give her time. So God wants to translate a whole nation. God has Canaan in mind, the promised land. That is why when you are speaking to Abraham, they're in Canaan. Canaan. And Canaan actually is a dry place. Yeah. Canaan was a dry place. It made Abraham become a liar. He went to Egypt. <laughs> not once, not twice, not once, and then he went to... And then it also made uh, Isaac go to Egypt, yeah? Mm -hmm. So these guys are going to be in captivity for... Now we can compete and say for 400 and something years. Uh, captivity, theologically, you can define it the way you want to. But w the pangs of captivity began to make more sense when a pharaoh who, knew, who did not know Joseph came into the picture. So you're talking about like the last 100 years of the 400. Are you understanding? You have to put it in perspective. As far as God is concerned, so long as they are not in where, 
I want them to be the in captivity. Are you clear? Yeah. Because the Bible says there's a Pharaoh who came up who did not know Joseph. How long does it take for a Pharaoh to forget that there's a guy who gave us a blueprint yeah. to be delivered yeah. from famine? Mm -hmm. It takes a long time, yes. which means let's give it. Are you thinking with me? Yes. Guys, I'm in the business of ideas, so we need to think. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So let's say the first hand, 300 years, mm -hmm. as feasible. Yes. Maybe the library had. <laughs> the key was lost somehow. He couldn't compute. So when, when the Pharaoh who did not know Joseph rose up and says, these Hebrews, these Hebrew guys are multiplying like crazy. If you don't take care, they'll take over. That's when he began saying, now we need to enslave them. Are you understanding? So just, you have to have those two perspectives. The perspective of God is, so long as they're not where I have, so, so long as they're not in the end game, we're still doing iron one. Anyway, so long as nothing in the end game. <laughs> Are you understanding? They're in captivity. So when a pharaoh comes and says, Daddy, not Joseph, he said, now we need to do what? Restrain these people. That's when slavery now what? Kicks in properly. And Joseph is very shrewd, very wise man. When they came in, he had told them, tell Pharaoh. Tell Pharaoh what? Tell Pharaoh you're shepherds because Egyptians don't like shepherds. So it will give me the authority to assign you very good land. Mm -hmm. So Goshen was a strategy. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so when they told Pharaoh that, they said, hey, Joseph, handle your people. Mm -hmm. Those guys who don't deal with what? Shepherds. Yes. So Joseph now gave them a place of what? So they enjoyed Goshen for a long time mm -hmm. before they became what? Captives, yeah. number one. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding that? Yes. They enjoyed Goshen for a long time. Okay, so let's go back. But where did this thing begin? with a young man just going to sleep and having two dreams. <laughs> two dreams. Sometimes when God wants to turn around a nation, he can disturb any of you mm. with a vision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know your visions are okay. They don't disturb you so much. <laughs> <laughs> he can disturb you with what? With a vision. So there's a dream of him and his brothers. Remember that? Yes. And then the second dream of him, his brothers, and his what? Mother and father. So it began with a dream. And it did not just begin with a dream. It began with a dreamer telling people about his dream. <laughs> so we, you are, I'm sure you've had sermons upon sermons about this. So every time I, ever, I always looked at this story of Joseph, I would remember sometimes when God gives you a flowery future. In the next three months, ABC is going to happen. And then almost immediately, two weeks later, everything looks like it's going in the reverse gear. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you just engage the gear and it goes stuck there. And your leg cannot come from what? The reverse, you're just going backwards. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So for mo most of us, sometimes we get there. Now, now, let me show you sometimes why we get there, especially for Nairobi Christians. <laughs> If you, especially you've been in the, what do you call the prophetic, prophetic industry. <laughs> it's because our word is delivered to you. Eh? Yes. Are you understanding? <laughs> our word is delivered to you. And nobody understands. I normally say the burden of interpretation sometimes is placed upon the receiver for some reason. So we are first of all struggling to interpret. What does it exactly even mean? And then when we have misinterpreted it to think that we are accurate. You didn't get me there. <laughs> when we have what? Misinterpreted it to think that we are accurate. Because we don't even know the dynamics of prophecy. How do you even deal with prophecy? How, do you, how does it even mitigate? Mm -hmm. Can we just, just call it God's word? Mm -hmm. Maybe that will be easier. Mm -hmm. So we think. And even you say God's word and it will be easier. Why don't you read your Bible? <laughs> are you understanding? Mm -hmm. So we get there and because we don't know the dynamics of the power of the word and how the word works for us, Mark chapter 4, yeah, Mark chapter 4, yeah. the wayside, stony ground, mm. thorns and thistles, you know, all those things. What happens? This thing goes round and round. So you're always just having what? Manufactured hope day by day. Mm. It goes there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, three months later, four months later, five months later. Oh, does prophecy normally have a deadline or not? Mm. I mean, I'm say prophecy that has no deadline is a fantasy because you're just there. So you're like in a sci-fi movie going, oh. <laughs> See, it's just Dr. Stranger has looked at this thing. And then you begin to get what? Frustrated. 
frustrated, not because you're not patient, just because something came in in form of a word mm. that might not have been even accurate. Mm. Mm. And then now I have to go for another conference <laughs> to prove that the one I received last week yeah. maybe might have been whatever. Yeah. So we technically have what you can call what? Hopers. Mm. There's a movie called Jumper. Yeah. 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 A guy jumps from one le- realm to another. Yeah. Yeah. So this prophetic thing jump makes us just jump from one place to another. And if that thing is not favoring what we thought we had, uh, yeah. yeah. So I understand there are a bigger chunk of you guys who are really frustrated because mm. breakthrough is not happening. Mm. And the Bible is still there. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible is just still what? There. So it has, it has made it difficult for discipleship to happen Mm -hmm. because teaching the word looks longer. Mm. Teaching the word looks tougher, looks longer, it's a marathon. Me, I want it now, like that. Mm. The God of what? Acceleration. Mm. The God of what? Suddenlies. Mm. (laughs) Just because the book of Acts says suddenly, and the Spirit of God came in. Mm. So we think, it's a God of what? (laughs) Suddenlies. Sorry guys, I'm I'm really busting your balloons. eh? Let, 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 me, let me catch myself. Yeah. Let's go back to Joseph. <laughs> Joseph is more juicier. Yeah. <laughs> so Joseph has dreams. And the first thing he happens that about his dream is contradiction. So say contradiction. contradiction. Yeah, contradiction against. Now, contradiction, again, is a linguistic term. Most of us, contradiction means something that comes in opposition to you. Me, I love breaking it into two. Contra, against, diction, which what? Speaking. Against the word. <laughs> Are you understanding? Yeah. So there's a contradiction. You've just set your sails going that direction. And every wind begins to blow against you. That happened to Joseph. And he's in good company called family. <laughs> he's in good familiar people. So that you don't judge your family. He's in familiar environment, familiar people. But the only one with a dream is Joseph. And then they get what? Jealous. So they throw him in a what? In a pit. And you have heard those songs. Pit, Potiphar's house, prison. Palace. 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 Yeah, good. You, you, know, you know this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know this thing. So there's a shattering of dreams, of a dream there. And most of us have been in those spaces. You're just about to get there. <laughs> You're just about to get there. And that thing got what? Shattered. And you just see your world collapsing. I think 10 or, four, 10 or so years ago, I used to say, in the coming days, there's going to be a crisis. And it's going to be a crisis of belief. Mm-hmm. Where your entire belief system is going to be shaken. Mm-hmm. And you'll even wonder whether you believed in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> Are you understanding? Yeah. So most of us sometimes, on particular areas in our lives, or a bigger chunk of our lives, we are there. It's not giving. So we are calling it what? A shattered dream. Because if you look at the trajectory of Joseph from the pit, he's even sold to Midianites. Do you know what Midianites were? Mm-hmm. You know Midianites are distant relatives. Yeah. Yes. Because they come through Keturah, yeah. Abraham's second wife. Yes. So you look familiar. Mm-hmm. Ah, but you, you are a good product. You are a good product. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are feeling sold. Mm. <laughs> ever, feel, ever felt sold? Yeah. Yeah. That's what Joseph was feeling. I'm feeling sold. People have ganged around you because of your dream, and then they have sold you. Mm-hmm. I'm a user. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a shattered dream, yeah? They're there. It's not nice. But you guys, you guys look like you're okay. <laughs> so, that's why I'm coming from that particular perspective where Joseph has just, you know the story, he experiences those trajectories. Yeah? So, <laughs> Let's first of all just define what this dream is because all of us have different definitions of what a dream is. Mm-hmm. So for me as a good teacher, we have to define, yeah? Mm-hmm. So uh, this is how I'll define it. A structure, what is the structure of a dream? Yeah? Mm-hmm. A dream is like a promise. Mm-hmm. The, the dr- a dream is promissory by nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah? One of the m- most robust ingredients of a dream is hope. <laughs> yeah? Mm-hmm. Is hope. So a dream is a promise or hope. It's what I call a core compelling, I'm calling it what, a core compelling persuasive component. Let me show you. When I say core, core is this C-O-R-E. 
score, yeah? It's foundational. It's a core, compelling, it's very compelling, yeah? It's persuasive, component of your journey. Because when Joseph has the second dream, we are going to begin to know Joseph differently. It's a core, compelling, persuasive. Co was Joseph persuaded about these dreams? Yes. He told his brothers, he told his father and mother without what? Fear. Oh. Yeah? Was it a bigger chunk of his journey? Yes. So I'm, totally, I'm calling it a core, compelling, persuasive component of your journey. I mean, if you capture a dream from God nicely and it docks, you won't have to struggle for faith mm -hmm. because you believe. You're already sold out. Mm -hmm. Not everybody begins there, mm -hmm. but at least you end up there. Mm -hmm. Clear? Sometimes your dream is not working, not, not just because it doesn't work. It's just that that core compelling persuasion, fuel, <laughs> is now fumes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you need some people around you yeah. to fire you up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah? Like Jesus in the belly of Mary doing a high five with John in the belly of Elizabeth. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> People of like faith. Mm. <laughs> in their realms. Yeah. This is Jesus in the belly of Mary. And John, how many months in advance? Six months. Yeah. And they're doing what? They're communicating. Yeah. Yeah. Things of spirit. That's why you, 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 you can be in a space somewhere and you're talking to somebody about something you're not even aware of. But you're communicating from that point, we're calling what? Spirit. And it's resonating with them. Yeah. Clear? So Joseph did not find any resonance amongst his family. He didn't find any resonance amongst his uh, brothers. and sisters, brothers. No resonance. And I want to encourage you sometimes, you might have a core compelling dream and there's no resonance. In the company of familiar people. Mm -hmm. That's why now you understand when the Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. Because when David is encouraging himself in the Lord, when you read that psalm, he's talking about, when he's talking about, well, in, that, in that context, is the context of Ziklag. Yeah. The familiar people now want even to kill him. Yeah. You're the one who came with your core compelling vision and told us to go and fight. Mm -hmm. Now we have lost everything, David. So, and David knows these soldiers. They know these guys, I know them. These guys are, I, I've trained these guys. Mm -hmm. The first time I met them, they were dis, distraught, dis, 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 despondent, yeah. discouraged. So, I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But now these guys are just crazy guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. And then now he stood up to ask for the effort to seek God. So there are places sometimes you are there. Some of you most likely have been there for the last six months. You encourage yourself in the Lord. You breathe in. You hold the breath and say, okay, Lord. <laughs> you have called God by all his Old Testament names. Yeah. <laughs> Rafa, Sidkenu. You know, they're over. And now, now, now you're just saying, Father. <laughs> So, these things, are very, these things are very strong. Just in case you didn't think you have a dream, you have it. So it's a core compelling persuasive component of your journey. Yeah? Mm. Uh, so everything we consider yeah, as a formidable pursuit of life yeah, is hooked to this thing called a dream. Mm. So I'm not talking about dreams lightly. Because all of us are present here, not because we had bus fare. Mm. We are present here because... We have this core compelling persuasive thing mm -hmm. that makes us wake up in the morning. It's your first alarm clock. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you don't wake up, you feel guilty. Not because of watch didn't, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's because it's a dream. You're feeling like I'm getting backwards as far as this. So this thing is that thing that, that does what? That, that absorbs any internal argument. You say, I am persuaded. Paul would say, I am persuaded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And this thing is unique to you because God is not short of dreams. Yeah. <laughs> because he never sleeps, no? Slumber. Slumber. So he knows how to dish out dreams. Yeah. Are you understanding? Yeah. I have a book called The Call by Os Guinness. Mm. And then he says, uh, one of the chapters, he talks, talks about the dreamer of the day. 
He says those are some, some of the most interesting. In fact, sometimes we are pursued or, or scorned more because you're a daydreamer. There's that dream you have yeah. that makes you look like you're asleep during the day. <laughs> <laughs> you're awakened to that reality than the other side of that. So this thing creates an, a what? an argument. I normally call it an argument because you're always contesting, did I hear well? Am I going the right direction? Mm -hmm. Should we stop here? You know, it inspires things like planning. It inspires things like strategy. It inspires things like every other thing. Mm -hmm. yeah? Jesus had a dream. Mm -hmm. he, did not, he did not mention it in the same way we mention it nowadays. Mm -hmm. But he knew, he says, for this reason did the Son of Man come mm -hmm. to destroy the works of the enemy. Mm -hmm. So because of that, he has to leave Nazareth and create an office in Capernaum. He has to choose 12 people. So you see, it's informing that. Yeah. His brief is, how do I convince the entire Palestine to crucify me in the next three and a half years? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> how do I convince these people? That's the brief. Mm -hmm. yeah. And everything he does for the next three and a half years mm. is to heighten that reality, not that possibility, that certainty. So a dream will move you from possibility to probability to certainty. Are you okay? Yes. <laughs> I need to know you're okay. Okay, so, the, so what is the structure of your dream again? Yeah? It at least reveals two things. Number one, your dream must actually be centered around the will of God. Are we okay? Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying that the dreams... Anyway, I'm going ahead of myself. So the structure of the dream relies upon at least two things. The will of God and how you are interpreting it. Let's try that again. The will of God and how you are interpreting it. Because you can have the will of God, but you misinterpret it. <laughs> Just like Jacob. There's the will of God. God says, Jacob I have loved. That's how I have hated. Yeah? But Jacob is the way he's interpreting that thing. Yeah? So Jacob did what? Engineered his own. He's saying, I see what God is saying, but I don't know how he's going to fulfill it. Yes. <laughs> knowing my brother, knowing my mother, knowing my whatever, I don't know how God is going to fulfill this thing. Mm -hmm. So I have to help God on this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. He's forgotten God had already foreseen that. That's why he's called Jacob. Uh, why is he called Jacob? The supplanter. This guy will try and help himself. <laughs> And I'll meet him in Genesis 33, where I'll fight with him and wrestle with him. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, you're dealing with God. Yeah. I can't even say he's been around. I can just say he's been. <laughs> Is that what? He's been. Because when you say around, it means you're tying him to time. He's been. Yeah. Time is what time is because of him. So, anyway. So some of us, sometimes we reach there. How... Is he going to fulfill this? Mm. Seeing that the circumstances right now are not favorable. Right. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then, because of that, we began today's class by talking about being led of the Spirit. Yes. Mm. If you are not led of the Spirit, you are doing what? You are, you are a data to the flesh, yeah? Mm. yeah? So you say, now let me do it. <coughs> let me manufacture my own mechanism. Mm. We've been there many times. Yeah. Maybe me, you guys are more holy than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, the will of God and how you do what? You interpret it. So Jacob, when he's told about the dream, what does he say? What are you saying? Are you saying you're going to do what? Yeah. Was that an accurate interpretation? Yes. In principle, it was. Yes. But is it feasible at that particular point? No. When you look at this, Joseph, <laughs> are there some things right now you have of God's dream? You're just saying, but how shall it be? Seeing that I'd have no man. Mm. <laughs> yeah? yeah? That's what Mary asked, yeah? yeah. How shall it be? Right. And Mary was just struck down like who? <laughs> like Zechariah. So why was Zechariah struck down? Mm -hmm. And Mary was set free? Mm. Question, yeah, that's your assignment. <laughs> Can't tell you. It's because Zechariah has a whole lineage of history that proves to him that God gives babies to barren women. Mm. But a virgin birth has never happened. Yeah. <laughs> What's the problem? Is that he's, a, he's a priest. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so, then, so that's where we are. So the will of God and how you do it, you interpret it. So interpretation is a function of the renewing of the mind. Mm. Eh? Mm-hmm. The Bible says, do not be conformed to the patterns, patterns of this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to do what? I'll give you my translation, to engage the will of God. Mm. So the will of God is engaged by what? A renewed mind. Mm. So how you interpret the will of God, yeah, mm-hmm. is congruent to how your mind is renewed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you clear? Yeah. Good, let's continue. Mm. So we are there, we are, now we're okay. Mm. Plane is landing a bit so we can start walking. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> so what are the components of the will of God, just in case? I was anticipating all of you. So now you're telling us about the will of God. What about the... I'm trying to make it as simple as Cedalac. <laughs> three things, at least. There might be 16, but for me, I normally just have what? Mambo and Matatu. Anyway, three things. <laughs> so the will of God has to, at least, yeah? Has to have his nature. It's impossible for us to interact with the will of God and not interact with his nature. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Number one. Okay. For those who are the will of God. <laughs> Somebody reminded me the other day. Dave, we know we are watching at home. <laughs> so the will of God has what? His yeah. nature. And then the will of God also has what? His word. <laughs> yeah? And that's, that's my point exactly about words. What do you call prophetic words? So most of us have words which we claim to come from God, but don't have what? His nature. Number one, or they don't exude his nature. Number one, number two, they're not even congruent to his word. To his word. Okay. And then you have his nature, his what? His word. And then that produces what? His work. God works where he wills. And where he wills, he natures himself. And where he natures himself, he does what? He, he does that by the, by the word. Are you clear? It's, it's, a, it's like triangulation. For those of you guys who are in SIS, it's like triangulation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jesus, Jesus' meetings used to have spies. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the nature of God is what? Yeah, good. If you've been in this class, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the nature of God is this. Two things. Two things. Love and what? Goodness. He says the goodness of God will lead men to repentance. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Romans chapter 2 verse 4. First John 4 8 says God is what? God is love. So the nature of God is what? Love and goodness. Now this is a very nice interesting parameter. You can use it as a plumb line to judge, to judge a lot of things that come into your life. So most of us have experienced sometimes a ghetto side of Christianity. <laughs> Where where God might be loving, but it's not good. <laughs> so you, 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 you are feeling like, I can bear God's love, but good. Ah, so when, when God begins to be good to you, you are suspicious. You're suspicious. And sometimes you can be accused, oh, you're teaching about the goodness of God so much. <laughs> Did Jesus die for you? Yes. Okay. So the nature of God was goodness and love. We are still in Joseph. Don't worry. We get there. This is a journey. <laughs> you see, we talk about teaching is a marathon. And then his word. What does his word do? The word of God frames. It frames a thing. So you can have what he call this uh, jelly-like word of God given to you. Mm-hmm. But you have to frame it in the word. Yeah. If it's unframable, then it's, it's, a, it's a suspect. Yeah. You see, I'm making it very easy for you. Yeah. <laughs> you see, have you ever gone and been given uh, dessert and it was jelly? That bubbler's jelly thing. Yeah. yeah. But how do you frame it? You use a spoon. Mm-hmm. From it so that you can eat it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the word of God is that thing that frames. You see, ah, the word of God will give it parameters. Yeah. Hebrews 11 verse 3, you know it. Mm-hmm. By faith we understand. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever taught you that faith is an instrument for understanding. By faith, we understand. Our faith produces a sensory nature 
of understanding or perceiving or understanding God. By faith, we understand that what? The ages were framed by the spoken word of God. They were framed. Yeah? One meaning is framed. Let me give you another meaning. They were repaired. They were mended. They were adjusted. They were restored. They were fit together. Yeah? So the word of God is important. That's why you need to be what? Students of the word. So when somebody says to you something, that is how you test the spirit. It is what? It is in a frame. You're already walking around with a frame. Are you clear? Yes. <laughs> and the third one is what? Work. What does it work do? Supplies what? You don't like this word. <laughs> you don't want energy because you think it's new age. But Jesus Christ ushered in the new age. <laughs> Not new age, the, the, the other, the cult. Jesus actually did not. Philippians 2.13. Yeah. It is God who do us. does what? Oh. It does, does what? He wills and works in you. He wills and works in you. The word work there is energeo. He supplies the energy for his will. He supplies the his energy for what? His, when you experience God, you get what? Energy. You're on a particular frequency of God, yeah? Are you understanding? So the components of the will of God is what? Nature, word, and work. How do I know the nature of God? God is always love. So you're not suspicious of his voice. You think, you think it's scandalous. God does not speak in King James English. <laughs> so I was telling my, one time I was teaching my kids in the house, and you're talking about Samson. Uh, Samuel, Samuel. How Samuel learned how to hear? God. Yeah, I think you can close the windows because of mosquitoes. Oh, yeah. Or if you just if you just vibrate on the frequency of the word of God, yeah. they'll the mosquitoes will start saying, "Hey, <laughs> this is not a meal to eat. <laughs> you must befriend. You know, you must you must learn how to use the word of God to govern creation." Anyway, <laughs> so so listen to this. I was telling them about uh, Samuel learning how to hear the voice of God. Yeah. Now. All of us, when you read Samuel and the story, this is, this, is, this is the picture we have. And I told you, when you have a particular spiritual picture and you're trying to define a particular spiritual principle, that's what sticks in your head. Yeah. So most of us think like this. God comes into Samuel's room and says, Samuel, <laughs> Samuel, <laughs> Samuel. <laughs> so let, let us unpack that a bit because we have used improper spiritual pictures mm. to misinterpret mm. the purposes and the intents of God. Yeah. So scenario number one. Mm -hmm. Scenario number one. Yeah. It might be something like this. Because Samuel said, is Eli, are you the one who's calling me? Mm. For him to think it's Eli, it most likely has, have come through the voice, the voice of Eli. Yeah. I'm just saying. Eli was not even knowing what is happening. Mm. I'm just saying. <laughs> because when God mingles with us, Supernatural things sometimes are hidden in our constant daily activities. Yeah. But we miss them. Yeah? yeah? We miss them. When the dove landed on Jesus' shoulder, he says, the spirit of the Lord came upon not Christ like a dove, like a dove. Not everybody there knew it was the spirit of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. Because hey, that guy, you know, a dove landed on him. Yeah. It's only John who designed and say, the spirit of the Lord has, is upon him. Yeah. Clear? Now, second option, most likely is a Samuel. Samuel. It's in the night. Samuel. I mean, in the night. Samuel. Samuel. <laughs> Everybody will be here. What's happening in that tent? This is Samuel. So someone was in the say, I want God to speak to me audibly. So you wake up and in the night you just hear, I'm <laughs> Oh, no, you'll, be sp you'll be spooked, eh? <laughs> It'll be spooky, yeah? But I'm just saying is this. So it's a summer, summer, summer. Who's that? Maybe it is a lie. Are you understanding? It's not in King James language. Anyway, so nature, word, and what? And work. Which supplies what? Love, goodness, frames the word, and then it gives what? Energy. So sometimes when you have a misframed, misframed word, if you could say so, yeah? You don't have the energy for that word. God cannot supply energy for a word that is misframed. Yeah. That's why he says, uh, by faith we understand that the ages were framed. Every age has an order. Yeah. Every age has an, has an overarching what? word. 
that the water that disciplines it, disciples it. Mm. Clear? Yeah. So any form of chaos, any form of chaos in a God word ordered age, yeah? Mm -hmm. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. Is what? Is against that word. Clear? Yes. Anyway, let me, let me, let me. So, from that point of Joseph having dreams and that being the will of God for Joseph, the will of God has what? God's nature, God's what? God's work. So now God begins his work because Joseph is persuaded. Yeah? And this persuasion is very interesting because he has been thrown in the pit. So he's saying, what am I dying for? Is this dream worth dying for? Is this dream worth living for? <laughs> you know, you quote those things sometimes in books, or you listen to them in the, on YouTube. Oh, if your dream has to be something, what's what dying for? This guy is dying. He's been thrown in a pit somewhere. <laughs> I, he's not even aware. It's not like you saying, this is my dream. Yeah. Yeah. He knows I was been thrown in this pit this because of my brother's misinterpreting that I'm becoming bigger than them. My, because of my dreams, it's true. But now, being sold to the Midianites to go where? Yeah. For my dreams? God, are you even serious? Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you okay? Yes. Good. So, the energy, the energy, the will of God, and what? The word of God. Remember these three things. They're going to save your life. Okay. <laughs> so, let me show you some particular things. Let me see if I can go that direction. So, God, so Joseph comes from... Uh, I'm, I'm actually trying to quicken this teaching a bit. So Joseph comes from the pit, you know, the, and he goes to Potiphar's house. Yeah? I'm speaking to you as mature. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm speaking to you as what? As mature. You know, Paul told the Corinthians, the Corinthians was a naughty church. <laughs> and it was the most gifted. <laughs> so don't just think because you're gifted. Anyway, because uh, Paul says, I will not even speak to you as wise. Paul says, I'll speak to you and what? As unto babes. Yeah. <laughs> and you call your F babe. You know, yeah. anyway. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Just call him wife. Anyway, so this is, this is the point. This is the point. So Joseph is where? Joseph is in Potiphar's house. Yeah. And if you read the chapter, Genesis chapter 37, there are many things that are happening there. Uh, it's a long, long chapter. I think it has how many scriptures? It has 36 scriptures. So he has been sold. <laughs> okay. There's a place. Now, where is he, where is she in, where is he in Potiphar's house? 39. Verse 39. Chapter, Chapter 39. 39. Okay, yeah. 39. So it goes. So when it's Potiphar's house, there's one thing that is very clear. Very clear. Because you might be in a place where you're feeling, okay, fine. I'm here. It's true. I had hopes. And things were just going well. But now I'm feeling, yeah. I'm in a different environment. It's better than the pit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been given things to do. I'm responsible. It's true. But uh, there's just a distance. I have not acclimatized yet. No. But there's something about Joseph that is very interesting. Yeah? yeah? On many occasions, even in Potiphar's house, the Bible always would say something like this, and the hand of God was upon Joseph. Mm -hmm. The hand of God was upon Joseph. We began class today by saying, you're led by the Spirit, because one of the ways the Spirit leads you is to open your ears so you can hear him. You can be familiar to his voice. Do you know why? Because that familiarity with his voice is important when you're not receiving a democratic acclaim to pursue him. Yeah. Are you clear? Yeah. There are things you've had God for, for you. But those things are the most tested. And they are tested. And the first test of that, all those things, the devil has never changed his script per se, is did God really say it's always in context of the what? The framing of God. Mm. The word of God. Mm. And if you mistrust the framing of God, you not enjoy what? His nature, neither what? His energy. And <laughs> so this guy is in a place where he's feeling, this is a contradicting space. It doesn't look like, you, that, at that particular point, you can't even tell Joseph about vision boards. <laughs> what do you see, Joseph? <laughs> What do you see for yourself in the next 10 years? Which 10 years? Joseph is thinking, I left my 10 years in the pit. Yeah. There are times when you are pursuing this dream that you don't, it doesn't look like you are even going anywhere. Wednesday is just Wednesday. <laughs> Thursday is just what? Thursday. <laughs> but the Bible says that the hand of God was what? Upon him. 
Okay, so three things you'll have to encounter. For some of you, or some of you out there who are experiencing this trilemma or dilemma, or quadrilemma, because maybe even four things, <laughs> that are feeling ensnared in a space or a context. You have been given responsibilities, yes. People look like you're that up there, because Joseph was in charge. Yeah. We like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are three things at least that are going to break out from there that you need to understand, so that at least you are still hopeful. <laughs> Number one, one of the classes you have to attend in such spaces is the assurance of God's presence. <laughs> now we'll have to, let's demystify God's presence. And the pun is, in, the pun is intended. You know, you guys don't, don't love jokes. You guys are very serious people. You know, there is mystery. Yeah, and then there's mist. So I want to demystify God's presence. Because we think God's presence is mist. <laughs> okay. You guys are so serious. <laughs> Those are dad jokes, eh? <laughs> my daughter will tell you guys, this are dad jokes. Because we think presence is what? Some mist somewhere. An angel of the Lord came to my room and there was mist. I couldn't even see clearly. You will have to rely on what God's presence is in those spaces of contradiction. Because presence is first about knowing before it is about feeling. Yeah. You can be in a space in the pursuit of a dream that is very contradictory. Even if you're given a mic, you can say, I feel the presence of the Lord. Yeah. But if you understand the framing of the word, you can say, I know that God is with me. Yeah. So we're in a space right now. Some of you are in spaces right now that you need to know to know God is with you. Okay, let me, let me. <laughs> you need to do what? To know God is with you. Yeah. And their eyes are, were open and they knew. Yeah. So we're not talking about the other side. We're talking about now this other side. Mm -hmm. Your eyes are open and you know God is present. Mm -hmm. You will need it. Mm -hmm. So presence is about what? Knowing. <laughs> yeah? So that is, a, so in those spaces of contradiction, the Holy Spirit begins to tutor you around what? Knowing presence. Knowing presence. You know God is present. I, don't, I might not feel like, sometimes I'm praying, I feel like it's hitting the, there's a place called the impasse. You reach the impasse. You're feeling like, yeah, I have peace in my heart. It's true. Two hours later, where did that peace go to? Yeah. The enemy does not like peace. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? So Joseph is there, the, and the hand of God was what? Upon him. Did you see, did you see that? Yes. Okay, let's, maybe you should read a verse or what. Okay, let's see. Um, three. Verse 3 says what? Uh, and, the, and his master saw that the Lord was what? With him. Let's begin from verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought, brought, bought him on the hand of what? The Ishmaelites. <laughs> Ishmael. So you know where the Ishmaelites are coming from? Yeah. That's a mistake that his dad made. So he's... <laughs> Which he had brought him down hither. Mm. Verse 2 says, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was what? A successful ah, how was this? How did he become prosperous? And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was what? A successful or prosperous man. And he was in the house of his what? His master, the Egyptian. Verse 3 says, And his master saw... Everybody says so. so. Yeah, there are some optics here now. Eh? Mm -hmm. So the first thing is the hand of God is upon Joseph. Mm -hmm. So knowing presence, knowing presence. If you have a dream, if you have this promissory thing that is compelling you every day, this called compelling thing, and you're not learning presence. <laughs> yeah, indicators, eh? Mm -hmm. That's a red flag. Mm -hmm. Learning, I'm talking about learning presence, knowing God is present. Yeah? Number two, the Bible says, and his master saw, because now it becomes visible. Yeah. In the first class, we talked about a brand being spiritual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you remember that? Right. Yeah, now this is, you, there's a way you package yourself, mm -hmm. and there's a way God is packaging you. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the hand of God is upon Joseph. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Joseph doesn't even have a gratitude notebook. <laughs> Look at this. His master saw the Lord was what? With him. This master is not a master of what? It's not like a, this spiritual guru or whatever. But there's something visible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
There's something what? Visible. If I had a mic, I would say, now see after me. <laughs> There's something what? Visible that was with him. And the Lord made all that he did to do it, to <laughs> prosper in his hand. So Joseph was diligent. He was energized by God to take care of his masters. He was faithful. He owned a word. Last week we talked about you own a word. There's ownership of the word because before you become what? A steward of something. Sure. Stewardship is what? Is fueled by ownership of the word. Yeah? So Joseph is owning these two dreams. He's even, most likely even at that particular point, he's feeling like, ah, this thing has been shattered. But I'm here. The hand of God is what? Is upon him and it is visible. So I'm just praying for some of you who are here, or all of you who are here actually, and some of you out there watching this, that there's going to be a visibility of what? The hand of God. Yeah? yeah. That is going to constrain, yeah. constrain, constrain all resources that you need to do it to come your way. Yeah. Because the Bible says he was a prosperous man. Why? Because the hand of God was upon him. And it was clear. This is not a church going Egyptian. <laughs> a guy who can sense presence. No, this is a guy who's outside of this fold, but you can say, hey, the hand of God is upon that guy. Mm-hmm. Are you clear? Yeah, yeah. So, that, so that, that, is, that is what is going to make difference. Mm-hmm. Okay. So his master saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. Mm-hmm. Verse 4 says, and Joseph found grace. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Joseph found grace and his, in his sight and served him. And he made him what? The overseer of his house. And all that he had put in his hand. What made Joseph to be promoted? Presence. God is presence. Let me show you. Let, me, let, let, us, let us unpack this word presence a bit. So apart from demystifying what presence is. Yeah? I know it's true. We, ha- we are spiritual body. So sometimes the body is affected by presence. And the, the reason why sometimes we are so overwhelmed around body presence it's because that's the gate we, we adore. <laughs> yeah? That's the gate we adore. So that if there's spirit presence, we don't feel like there's, spirit, there's anything. <laughs> that's why some people have shaking, yeah? <laughs> but it's because the spirit affects the soul, affects the body. Are you understanding? So, uh, so presence is one that inspires presentness. Presence, presentness. What is being present? When you're saying, are you present? I keep on telling you, are you guys here? Are you present? Are you yeah. Aware. Are you aware? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you what? You're not, you're aware. You are conscious of. Yeah. Are you clear? Yeah. So a present God, a present God inspires presence. Mm-hmm. So there can't be presence of God without what? Presentness of him. Mm-hmm. Are you understanding? Yeah. And presence and presentness is directional. So he can't just be there for <laughs> you could say that, eh? Mm. For those guys who are watching in China, Fua means just there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he can't just be there. God is there for what? A purpose. So, how do you derive, if I could say something from the economy of presence? Mm. Psalm 16 says, in the presence of the Lord, there is what? Fullness of joy. Now, it's only. F- the reason why David is saying it's fullness of joy is because at that point of his prayer, that what, that's what he had extended his faith for, joy. But presence has all that God is and all that God has. Are you understanding? That's what I'm saying. Presence is what? Directional. As far as David is concerned in Psalm 16, the last verse, for him, the direction of presence at that point was what? Joy. So there cannot be what you can call misused presence because God is not present for nothing. For nothing. He's present for something. That is why the word frames. Now the word will come and frame what? Presence. Mm-hmm. And say, it's for this purpose. Mm-hmm. Clear? <laughs> and presence, presence brings in the distinction, clarity, mm-hmm. clarifies, uniqueness, mm-hmm. conspicuousness. Ask Obed Edom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Obed Edom. Yeah. Now, David understood presence. Because David said, I have captured the city. Mm-hmm. But the software that is going to run this city mm-hmm. is the ark, is the presence of God. Yeah. So I have to go and capture it. Mm-hmm. So if you have a dysfunctional church in a city like this, mm-hmm. guess what? Mm-hmm. 
me. Yeah. <laughs> so David says, I have to pull what? The ark to bring it to this city so that this city can what? Function. It's true by military strategy. Jebus or Jebusa, the created Jerusalem. I have captured the city. It is giving me vantage point. Mm -hmm. But for this city to, to what? To function, I need to bring in what? The ark. Mm -hmm. So first attempt, he failed. Yeah? Remember? Mm -hmm. Because presence also has what? Yeah, he has, he has, has a framing. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding? Yeah. So he packed it at Obed Ezum's house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This guy is like the way you normally see those movies. So the Bible says, those movies they say, an alien has landed in my compound. <laughs> and the Bible says, Obed Adam did what? Prospered. He was distinct from his neighbors. Presence. Are you seeing that? David is, unique. David is a very unique man. He says, and he was always jealous. David cannot sleep. For three months, he's not sleeping. That guy is enjoying. This, this thing is supposed to be in the city for everybody to enjoy. That's why God allowed David. Let's democratize presence. Yeah. So, so there, that's where Joseph is. That's presence. So presence, was, so when presence means for God to be present, it means God is committed. So sometimes the dissonance we experience between your dream and the journey of your dream is because you begin to think or to feel God is not committed. You see, once you understand the commitment of God in your pursuit of a dream, mm -hmm. it means you're experiencing presence. Mm -hmm. So if there's that dissonance, and that dissonance happens where? Here. Mm -hmm. This thing has to be tutored every other day mm -hmm. and be reminded that God is present. Mm -hmm. God is present. Mm -hmm. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. So if there's dissonance between you being able to interpret God is still committed to this course, mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not God that needs persuading. Mm -hmm. It's you who needs what? Persuading. Confessions are not for God. <laughs> God is secure, eternally secure. He knows he'll keep his word. Confessions are for you to be persuaded. People think, I'm not confessing so God can't remember. <laughs> it's, it's for what? For you to continue to remember that he's still committed in this course. Are you understanding? Yeah. That's why the hand of God is appearing upon Joseph and is even becoming visible to Potiphar. Mm. So now David, now but Joseph has come from the pit, first offense, the brothers. Potiphar's house, second offense, he's been framed. Mm. He's been framed outside of the word. <laughs> <laughs> second offense, yeah? He's been yeah. framed. Yeah. So where was he thrown? Prison. It's prison. He's been thrown upwards. <laughs> yeah, so one of the things that happens is this he stays in the prison and this is not the prison of Potiphar this is not the prison of Pharaoh mm -hmm. yeah. he stays there but now David now Joseph has to learn how to deal with offense mm -hmm. you, you think you, mm -hmm. by the way that thing was deep yeah. even when he became now the one who needs to take care of that you know you can be that place of now ah, uh, let bygones be bygones. I'm in charge. I've given Pharaoh an interpretation for the next seven years and another seven years. So I'm, I'm okay. Until the brothers show up. And he begins to realize, whoa, this thing is still here. Yeah. You see that? So number one, when you're in that place, I said, assurance of God's presence. So you're being, you need to, to be schooled. So you don't misinterpret the commitment of God to that dream. Number two, the what? Uh, number two. Uh, did I mention number two? Number two was supposed to be the maturing in the visibility. For example, when the Bible says, Potiphar so, Potiphar so. So you begin to mature in the visibility and the certainty of God. You're maturing what? In the visibility and the certainty of God as far as your dream is concerned. Everybody else might not be seeing God in it, but you're seeing God yeah. in every other thing because of that dream. Are you clear? And then the third one is what? This thing is supposed to help you break away from the loop of offense. Mm -hmm. To break away from what? The loop of offense. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Are we okay there? Yeah. I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see things to jump. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, uh, so, let me, so let me show you something again. Uh, 
how we're experiencing God in this thing called presence and dreams. Uh, most of us, when we're pursuing a dream, the dream in our mind and our imagination is big. Yeah? It's big. Sometimes we feel like we're not enabled. We feel like, uh, I don't qualify for this. Yeah, that's when my imposter syndrome. Ever heard of that? Yeah. I don't qualify for this. Am I really, am I joking with myself? You know, who am I to feel like, to feel like, yeah, that can happen. But the assurance of God in the journey of your life, as far as your dream is concerned, sometimes does not come like a blast of glory. Poof. The assurance of God, as far as your dream is concerned, when God wants to encourage you, some come, sometimes those encouragements come in pockets of seeds. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I, want, I, want you, I want you, to, I want you to, be, to be conscious of the fact that going forward, sometimes the delivery of God, as far as encouragement is concerned, is there might be what? In pockets of seeds. Mm-hmm. Why? Because God, in his estimable wisdom, knows that you are his son. Mm-hmm. And he has gene in you the DNA to do what? To nurture things. Mm-hmm. To nurture things. Mm-hmm. So he knows he can give you a seed of presence. And you can nurture it into a harvest of what? Of glory. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't know if you're understanding what I'm talking about. But I'm trying to. Because <laughs> now, when, when, when Potiphar saw the hand of God was on Joseph, he didn't come announcing, hey, hey, Joseph, I can see the glory of the Lord upon you. I can see whatever. It's not even visible to other people, but to the master, to the necessary people. To the what? The necessary people. The ones who can give or move policy. <laughs> the ones who can open a gate. Are you understanding? Those are the ones that this thing became visible to. And now Joseph was given what? Responsibility. And we are praying about those big spaces that you need to make sure this dream comes to pass. I can assure you about the third point. It is supposed to be enabled to, for you to break away from your loop of offense. Why? Because as you grow, if your offenses are not taken care of, they also grow with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah? yeah? And you just, most of us think maybe you're just offended by your brother or your sister or your friends. Yeah. Sometimes you find yourself just being offended by the God who gave you the dream. Mm-hmm. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. You're scared to say yes because you think you'll spend it. <laughs> so that's why presence is what? Important. God is present to tutor you. Lo, behold, I will be with you always. Are you clear? Mm-hmm. So the reason why, again, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm on presence today, just for today, and then we'll, stop, we'll continue next week. I'm on presence today because God gets involved in your dream. <laughs> Especially sometimes to undo that bag of condemnation when you're feeling like it has told. Okay. <laughs> the journey of pastor, it's what, it's, this journey is presence driven. There's no what condemnation. In God's presence, your vulnerabilities, your insecurities, your failures, your misjudgments are embraced. <laughs> the journey of pastor of presence, your journey is presence driven, yeah? It has no condemnation. In God's presence, your vulnerabilities, your insecurities, your failures, your misjudgments are what? Embraced and recalibrated. God does not leave you there like that. He recalibrates. Yeah? Because if, if you are vulnerable, insecure, you're failed, you're misjudged, and you don't have a proper perspective of your father, you'll use all those things to create distance. Are you clear? Yeah. You'll use those things to do it to create distance. Yet, you need to be there. So most of us think, I need to deal with my insecurity so that I can go to the Father. Mm-hmm. The Father is saying, bring that insecurity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is what, what? Bring that insecurity. Mm-hmm. I, I, I have nature. I have the word and I have what? Energy. Mm-hmm. You can't tire me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah? Oh, but I failed on this. I misjudged this. I misimpressed this. I said, like, bring it. Come with it. Mm-hmm. Do, do you understand that God created you in his presence? Mm-hmm. 
Do you understand that you're a presence being? Yeah. I don't think you understand that because most of us, presence to us is when the worship team sings <laughs> and this heavy song begins to happen. No, God is saying you're a presence being. Yeah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> presence being means he created you. Yeah. <laughs> There's a place in God called before. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Before can be linear as far as time is concerned. Mm-hmm. Before this. Mm-hmm. But before can also be in front of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> before I, before I, formerly in your mother's, I, so most of us interpret that be linear, time. Yeah. Mm, yeah, by the time I'm coming to my mother's room, there's a time. But he also created you what? Before. I knew you. We conferenced. You don't remember? We had a conference. <laughs> okay. So the reason why this is important and you need to learn to be treated by the Holy Spirit around this thing called presence, God always being constant, instant, and committed to that dream is because you might be accused by the system of Potiphar's wife. You've heard of the accuser of brethren. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you might be accused by the system, but it doesn't mean you're condemned by God. Uh. <laughs> Are you understanding? Yeah. You might be accused, accused by the system, but that doesn't mean you're condemned by God. Yeah. Potiphar's wife condemned or accused Joseph, yes. but it doesn't mean God was condemning what? Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. You might be accused by the system, Potiphar's wife, yeah. or the accuser of brethren. Yeah. But that does not mean you're condemned by God. Mm. A toxic space or system bears the fruit of accusation mm. and condemnation. Mm. That is how you know a toxic system. Mm. It bears the fruit of what? Accusation yes. and condemnation. Because it wants, it wants to reduce you mm. to the level of its passions. <laughs> so the point is this so how do you self-insulate or quarantine yourself how do you self-isolate or quarantine yourself from a toxic space for a system of that is accusatory and you know when the bible says in the book of revelations the accuser of brethren mm-hmm. yeah then the that that concept there it says the concept the, the concept there is he accuses you in public yeah? Mm-hmm. The word there is agora. You know what agora means? The market space or the public space. These are public spaces. Mm-hmm. So you can see how Joseph was accused. Mm-hmm. So the, it's possible for us to uh, misinterpret the accusations of Potiphar's wife mm-hmm. as condemnations of God. Yeah. A system can be, war- <laughs> you know, I'm, well. <laughs> just, just in case you feel like. <laughs> You guys might search now. You know, there's, there's normally a Jezebel spirit. <laughs> and a Levi- Leviathan that. So uh, we might begin saying a Potiphar this, Potiphar wife this. Yeah? So a system can be full of a Potiphar's wife spirit, <laughs> which is a toxic space. But two things will always be constant, accusation and condemnation. So the problem is this, how do you interpret that? So if you're fully persuaded by what? The word and the will of God. And you can see the nature of the will. Yeah? That accusation has, doesn't have love, it doesn't have goodness, yeah. it's not framed by the word, it does not supply what? The energy of God. Yeah. So it is now time for God to remove Joseph from that space. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you self-insulate? Because you know, you know, Joseph, Potiphar's wife was there every other day. Some people, some people just take off and run away. Okay, look at this. Uh, you do so through what? You do so through presence. I'm assured that God is with me, yeah? Mm. You do so because of assurance. Because presence produces assurance, yeah? Mm. And presence produces what? Oneness. Mm. Yeah. And love. Knowledge. Once you, all these things you begin to compute. When I'm in presence, there's assurance, there's oneness, there's love. There's knowledge, there's revelation. You see that? All those things come as a package. When you invite God in your space, yeah, he comes as fully God. <laughs> okay. Are you clear? Yes. Uh, so e- essentially, presence is not song driven, it's actually word driven. Mm. 
the song is just a vehicle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know some guys will say. Okay, okay. So let us see something. The reason why it is important for Joseph to have gone through that process. Are we about to finish? No. Okay, still a, still a bit of time. Okay. So the reason why it's important for us to understand this, because Joseph now is being given responsibilities. Now he goes to Potiphar's house responsibilities because the hand of God is upon him. And then he goes to Pharaoh's prison, yeah? Again, responsibilities. Did you see that? Uh, let me see. Um, ah, something very important here. Verse 9 says, when Pharaoh's wife was always pursuing Joseph, yeah? Verse 9 says, there is none greater in his house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are what? His wife. Yeah? How then can I do this great what? Wickedness and sin against who? God. Ah! So, so you see, Joseph is God conscious. Yeah. You know, me, I'm not here because Pharaoh has given me promotion. <laughs> or Potiphar has given me promotion, whatever. Yeah. Me, there's, there's somebody I am before. <laughs> there's somebody I'm always what? Before. before. And there's somebody who's always what? Before me. <laughs> when before moves from being linear to face to face. Anyway. So obviously, you know what happened? He was chased. He left his garment. Then he's thrown into another prison. <laughs> now look at this. I think from verse, uh, verse 20. Let's see, verse 20. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison of a, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with what? With Joseph. Verse 21. Again. Every time. They're trying to break you. They're trying to move whatever. The Lord is with whatever. The Lord is with. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he showed him what? Mercy. And gave him what? Favor. In the sight of what? The keeper of the prison. He showed him what? Favor. Mercy and favor. Mercy is Hebrews chapter 4. We come into the throne of grace. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And obtain what? Mercy. In the time of what? Need. <laughs> okay. So he showed him mercy and gave him what? That word mercy is about loving kindness. Yeah. yeah. And gave him what? Favor in the sight. In the sight. It's optics. This is, a, this is not you showing off. This is God showing off through you. <laughs> favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison and the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand and all the prisoners that were in the prison <laughs> and whatsoever they did there he was what? The doer of it the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did the Lord made it to prosper that's Joseph so there are interesting responsibilities we get so let me show you some things uh, you see, when you have a shattered dream, you can tend to get offended. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I think Proverbs 13, verse 12. Let me see. Proverbs 13, verse 12. Let's just go there. Proverbs 13, verse 12. Some of you know that scripture. If you've been memorizing it, we are praying for you. Mm -hmm. It says what it says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it's a tree of what? Of life. <laughs> and the breakthrough comes straight away. But when hope is deferred, it's postponed, it's pushed every other time. Your heart becomes what? Sick. It becomes offended. It becomes a nesting place of the distribution of death. <laughs> you cannot supply life, eh? So it says a shattered dream is what? A breeding spot for two things at least. At least it's the breeding spot for offense. A core wound is developed. When some things are delayed, there are some people right now, and I have been there, when things have been delayed for a long time. Mm -hmm. Ah, you even fall away from this framing. Mm -hmm. Now you have your own framing, yeah. which is supplied by maybe misinterpreted data. Yeah. Even if it's accurate data, you're just thinking, I don't know. So your heart begins to be what? Mm -hmm. Sick. And see, uh, what offense does, it makes you spiritually blind. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes naturally blind. Mm -hmm. There are opportunities you don't see because... The Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Purity of heart opens your ocular nerves, it opens your eyes. But when you're full of offense, there's some things you see. You can't see clearly. So God is actually dealing with that. Yeah? <laughs> because Joseph is about to get another form of offense. 
when he's in, when he interprets the dream and the guys forget it. Yes. <laughs> so you see, yes, that's my point exactly. Most of us most likely are just carriers of what offenses. Your commitment was to the dream of God. Mm-hmm. But with it, it was an email with an attachment. Yes. <laughs> you thought it was a PDF. Mm-hmm. Kumbi, it was what? A virus. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So look at this. Let me show you something. <laughs> the meaning of the word offense, which is very interesting. The, and I think in the Old Testament, when it, it is the word uh, when you're grieved, yeah? It's the word shala. C H A L A. H. Let me show you that. L A H. Yeah. So it means to be grieved. Eh? Mm-hmm. Grieving is like mourning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To be grieved. It means to be uh, this thing. The, the reason why it's dangerous. The reason why you need to deal with offense quickly mm-hmm. and surgically is because this grieving produces what we call here a stroke. No, I'm just interpreting the Hebrew word for that. It produces what? A stroke that enforces what? Paralysis. Mm. Paralysis, yeah? Paralysis. So it means you can't move. Mm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. It, means to, it means a twist, a whirling loop. And then it creates, it, now in, in the Hebrew it says it creates what you call a whirling loop. Do you know what whirling is? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So it creates what? A loop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I give you a classic picture of this loop? Yes. When the children of Israel <laughs> refused to go into what? Canaan. The Bible says, God says they have rejected my word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Mount Sinai became what? A loop. He says cycles. He mm-hmm. says circles or cycles. He mm-hmm. says they rejected the word. So they were not feeding from the energy of God's word. Mm-hmm. Not feeding from what? His nature. <laughs> Are you seeing that? <laughs> In fact, now there's a word here that even defines it very poetically. They say it becomes a dance of frustration. Mm. Becomes what? <laughs> a dance of what? Frustration. You are dancing, but you are frustrated. <laughs> kind of dance of frustration. That's how you need to deal. Yeah. You, d- you don't know you can be offended until you begin to pursue a dream. <laughs> All of you guys look like a clean guys, you're just okay. <laughs> but you don't know you can be offended until you've been what? To pursue a dream. Way. And you begin to realize some people who have been brought around you are raw material. Mm-hmm. They didn't come from the showroom. <laughs> <laughs> so this circular looping mindset is a mindset actually, a thinking. It takes capture of your of your vital senses. Yeah. Yeah. So we begin to judge everything from that place of offense. So we now we are moved from the platform of judging things from the framing of the word of God mm-hmm. to a place of the framing that has been done, what that has come by offense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the, the point is this, you think you have the most accurate picture, mm-hmm. most accurate judicial picture because you feel the pain. Mm-hmm. You feel the pain. Mm-hmm. And pain is very attractive. So it's possible that now <laughs> you find that the company you're keeping yeah, is actually a WhatsApp of just people yeah. who have gone through the pain of what? Yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> so, so you're okay there, yeah? So number one, so this, the consequences of shattered or delayed dream, yeah? So that delay can cause that thing. So I'm, I'm just giving you a heads up of, hey, be watchful for this. Number two, what it does is this. It readjusts this thing readjusts our sense of value. Value has been a big thing for me in the last one and a half years. It readjusts your sense of value, especially the value of your gifts and endowments. Because when a dream, a dream is delayed or shattered, it starts saying, so why am I even this? Why am, I even, why am I even anointed in this direction? What's the point? You become like Esau. Yeah, yeah, so anything, anything that can move your affections, you can use your gifts to trade. Mm-hmm. In terms of just, ah. yeah. Yes. yeah. So you're actually selling out your authority. Yeah. Or you are, you're selling your, dom- can I say domain of stewardship, if you could say so? Yeah, something of that nature. So you are, it readjusts your value. There are decisions you can make from a point of pain. And those decisions you make from a point of pain betray how you value things. 
they show how you value things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are we okay? Yes. So it is just. So that thing is, a, when you say the accuser of the brethren, he comes in very many forms. But one of the things is that he's coming slowly by slowly to come and he, he's like malware. <laughs> so he can ingrain himself in the system. So yeah, there's a place you're always making decisions from a point of what? Of injury, of offense. Your senses are captured. And you, you are so convinced you are right. So some of, some of the things you've, we, we have sometimes in our lives called dormant gifts. Uh, dormant because we are once injured there. So we say things like this. Once beaten, twice shy. But the, the enemy always has words for it. Yeah. Any form of injury, he has a branding for it. He'll supply the linguistic branding for it. And it'll be acceptable. <laughs> Are you okay? Yes. Good. Let me see if we can. Okay. Do you have time? Okay. I can finish this thing today. Okay. So anyway, so the funny thing is this. In all those stations, God is always giving Joseph responsibility. <laughs> so why does God give you responsibility? Number one, God always gives you responsibility so that you can be able to manage your context. The first context you're managing is your heart. Mm -hmm. And then now you manage the things that have been given. So some of you are thinking, because my dream is shattered, nobody's going to give me responsibility. You find you're just being given what? Responsibility. Why? Because the hand of God is upon you. So people, some people think, if the hand of God is upon me, I'll feel nice. <laughs> I'll feel nice. <laughs> just if I was not feeling nice. It's <laughs> not feeling nice. Yeah? So look at this. Three things about responsibility. Three things about what? Responsibility. Okay, number one. Responsibility gives you the power to believe in someone. <laughs> you don't like that one, eh? Responsibility gives you power to believe what? In someone. Number one. To believe in God. To believe in a people. Or something. It fuels your capacity to say, this thing is worth it. In spite of, instead of saying this thing is not worth it. Are you clear? Yeah. Responsibility gives. So Joseph has been given responsibility every time. He's in charge of people. So God is saying, Joseph, you see, when you are injured and in charge of people, that context is a mirror. You begin to see yourself. <laughs> responsibility gives you the power of identifying, or to identify, the power to identify uh, your self-worth. Yeah? Because it's, it's at that particular place of the bottom of your dream that you begin asking yourself, who am I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good question to ask. Yeah. But be careful about the answer. Yeah. <laughs> because the answer is going to be the North Pole. Yeah. <laughs> the answer is going to be that place where you begin to define everything else. Yeah. Now, if you are conscious of presence, God starts telling you, you are this. You start asking God, are you serious? Are you even serious? Mm. So Gideon was there. Who am I? Mm. I'm the least of the least of the least. And, and the angel of the Lord comes and says, oh, Gideon, mighty man of Vela. Yeah. <laughs> and Gideon is, trying to, Gideon is trying to reduce God's conversation yes. to how he sees himself. Yeah. And God is trying to elevate Gideon to his conversation on how he sees Gideon. Yeah. That's what dreams are for. God is always reminding you how you see. I'm not saying God... You see, if you decide you want to see yourself from your perspective, mm -hmm. that's your decision. Mm -hmm. But that's not God's finality. Mm -hmm. yeah. God will always begin to... Will always do what? Try to raise you up to see yourself from his point of view. Mm -hmm. Because your point of view is temporal. Yeah. His point of view is eternal. Wow. So he's actually giving you an opportunity to what? To agree with the eternal. Hey, Jesus, help us. <laughs> Sometimes we flunk that test every day. Eh? So once you know who am I in that context, then you can ask yourself, so what am I responsible for? Are you seeing that? You see, the problem is this. We have carried this entire process and we have condemned ourselves. We judged ourselves. We have beaten ourselves. And God is, we, we have voluntarily the devil was not even in town. 
Number, so number, that's number two, yeah? Mm -hmm. Number three, responsibility gives you the power to rest yourself. Yeah? <laughs> In an estate of authority. Mm -hmm. what, what, what do I mean by that? I'm saying it gives you that once you're handed over responsibility, you're just being reminded you have authority. Yeah? Mm -hmm. To rest yourself in that estate called authority. Yeah? You can still have dominion. Mm -hmm. You can still have a jurisdiction. You can still have direction. Mm -hmm. You can still attract resources. You can still have relationships. Mm -hmm. But most of us, we just do what? We shatter them. To rest yourself in the estate of what? Of authority. Because mm -hmm. every time we condemn ourselves, we are actually conniving. If not, not say conniving. We're actually ganging up against our capacity to see ourselves as people who are what, in charge. <laughs> so sometimes I say this because of this sometimes we miss out to experience the presence and the assurance of God in spaces where we are reluctant to step in and handle the responsibilities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to experience God God says oh you want to experience me here is a responsibility ha, not me I am not qualified I don't deserve it yeah. Why me, Lord? <laughs> and God is saying, but you wanted to experience me. Yeah. <laughs> and you see, your dream, your dream is that door you open. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? We love the glamour of the dream, the vision, how it looks like, yeah, we're going far. Yeah. Your dream is that door you open to see the invitation to be responsible, to experience experience God. I want to experience God. Here is a dream. Oh, what is a dream? Open the door and step in. Oh, am I stepping in? Because I want you to be responsible on how you encounter me. Yeah. And which does not negate the fact that you're a, your dream is not of God. Yeah, okay. But it is assumed that it is of a meeting. So somebody told me, so every time somebody asks a question in class, I should repeat it for the camera. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> 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 I don't know if you're assuming you're hearing what they're asking. Yeah. So the question actually is, when you, you become a Christian, do you drop everything and pick a microphone mm -hmm. and become a preacher? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah. That anything else I pursue, I might not look like it's of God. Yeah. And how <laughs> Uh, how do you design now? How do you design that? Yeah. You design that by knowing the first time you accepted Jesus to be a personal savior. It is always going to be a journey of relationship. Yeah. Number one, number two, is always going to be speaking. God is the most verbose person. Yeah. He loves speaking. Yeah. yeah, he loves speaking. I know you guys love speaking, but he's <laughs> he loves speaking. He loves speaking. So the first thing he tutors you is to hear him, number one. And he does that very many ways. Not, there are very many ways God does that. Yeah. Uh, and a big part of how you'll hear him clearly is through this pursuit. Yes. <laughs> so most of us pick things and say, hey, how do I know I picked the right thing? You start conde you're already starting condemning yourself. Mm. Are you understanding? Mm. You say, ah, oh, now he's not even with me. Why? Because we engineer that mechanism of, as I say, every time we, we hear the voice of our father, at the point of our heads, we think it's scandalous. So unless we begin to see the Father from a point of what? Of love and goodness. Even if we have a genuine, yeah? genuine, genuine dream, we will never be confident in carrying it. Look at this. I began by saying, Adam, Adam, where are you? He says, I heard your voice and I heed. This guy was fallen. He heard it. Yeah? So we need to begin to have more confidence that God is more compelled by his love to speak to us clearly yeah. than we missing out on his voice. Because the tutelage we have received is we will miss out on his voice. Yeah. Be careful. You might just miss out on his voice. Yeah. You can, now, I have, a, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have three young guys in the house. 
Yeah? Mm -hmm. Even when they are doing their own things, good or bad, they can still hear my voice. Mm -hmm. When I'm coming downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> we even have pets, they can hear my voice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pets. Yeah. What about not? What about children? Mm -hmm. So when I'm coming and I open the door, I try as much as possible to use my kids as an example because those are the people I live with. Yeah. <laughs> those are the dreams God has used to tutor me yeah. to hear his voice. <laughs> so, so they're in particular corners. Yeah? Let's say one, in the, one is in the kitchen, one is in the sitting room, one is upstairs. When I come and say, hi guys. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then you stop the video there. And then you ask all of them indifferently, who is that who came in? Who said hi guys? What do they say? Dad. Dad. So why do we think now, okay, so one most likely, let's say one is mischievous upstairs, yeah. but he has hi guys. Mm -hmm. What does he do, like Adam? <laughs> <laughs> I heard your voice. <laughs> but the thing is this, they will not misconstrue that voice. Yeah. Why? Because we have a relationship. Yes. We have a relationship. Mm -hmm. So trying to make this thing so deep and mystic yeah. and mysterious yeah. is costing us. Because the Christian, the believer by nature is voice activated. Yeah. My sheep hear yeah. my voice. Yeah. I no longer call you what? Servants. I call you what? Friends. Yeah. And because I call you friends, I will begin to what? To reveal to you mm -hmm. the things that my father has taught me. Yeah. He says, when the spirit of the Lord comes, he shall not speak of himself. He's a speaking spirit. Yeah. He shall do what? Take of mine and give to you. He's a speaking spirit. Yeah. So, a lot of us are in delay mode. Like now my kids in the house are saying, Dad, I couldn't do that because I didn't hear you. Hey. Most, of the time, no, most of the times, they might not do the things I told them to do. Not because they didn't hear me. Actually, most because I, did, I told them. <laughs> but are you understanding that? Yeah. There are a lot of things that they, they might not do. Not because they didn't hear me. Mm -hmm. Because I told them. Mm -hmm. So most of us actually are in waiting mode. We're waiting for God to confirm a word that he confirmed yesterday. I said, maybe let me wait for 10 more days to see if he'll confirm it again. Yeah. So that I can what? Step out. Are you clear? Yes. So what moves God is what? His love mm. and his goodness. Mm. In everything. Even in speaking to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because God is a God of journeys. Mm -hmm. So when he's speaking to you, he wants to make sure you heard what? Clearly. I mean, he's not a wicked father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that he'll that he'll bond up on because he didn't hear me clearly. <laughs> I, no, I'm, I'm, I have to say that clearly. Mm -hmm. So he is working with you. Right. He knows this guy, I need to, <laughs> he'll, he, look at the journey between Jesus and Peter. Mm -hmm. yes. He even calls Peter, get me this, behind me devil, you know. Yeah, yeah. But he's, he walks with him. Towards the end, he's telling Peter, 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 do you love me? Yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. So you think Peter has gotten it. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So people say, oh Lord, you know, oh Lord, you know. The first time he says, he denied him. Yeah? <laughs> Second time, he's telling Jesus, you can't go and die. Dying what? What do you mean dying? Mm. You know, Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Mm. The instant before that, he said, you are the son of the living God. Peter. 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 Same Peter. Okay, Peter, Peter, do you love me? Oh, yes, my Lord. I do love Three times. Feed my sheep. Then they go to Acts chapter 1. He's with them for 40 days. Mm. This is the resurrected Jesus. Mm -hmm. A 40-day masterclass <laughs> about the kingdom. And they say, okay, we hear you, but shall you now restore the kingdom? Mm -hmm. Still asking them questions. Mm -hmm. Say, guys, <laughs> okay, just do this. Just tarry in Jerusalem. <laughs> After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, yeah. and it shall be what? You shall be my witnesses. Yeah. Acts chapter 2 happens. Peter is a leader of the troop. Yes. He comes down, moved of the spirit, full of faith. Yeah? yeah? yeah. This is Peter who is hearing God. Mm -hmm. And does what? And speaks to the people. One, mm -hmm. he gets 3,000 subscribers <laughs> <laughs> on his channel. Yeah. <laughs> Are you understanding? Yeah. Peter, Acts chapter 2. Then the Lord says, okay, now Peter, again, upper, an upper house, take this and eat. Yeah. Me? <laughs> Same Peter, Apostle Peter. This is not Apostle Peter. <laughs> so it is forbidden. This thing, can, you see that? Yeah. So God is there with Peter. Mm -hmm. That journey. That journey, that journey. So most of us have given up on what? Denying him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And every time he comes, he wants to do what? 
present, call presence, mm. present with you, you say, ah, me, I'm done. Mm. Yeah. Me, I'm done. Mm. I have my truth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there like a connection between ambition and dream? <laughs> I think Eve is waiting for the response. Yeah. Is there a connection between ambition and dream? Yeah. Spirit, soul, body. Mm. What is inspiring it? Mm. Well, the, the, the truth actually is most of the ambitions are, are body driven. Yeah, yeah. yeah just. Because if it's spirit-driven, as I told you, as many as are led by that, yes. and you say, oh, good, you've come, yes, you've come, oh, good. Now let me lead you. Mm. Let's try it modifying some particular things. Mm. So, yeah, but that one is not, it's not, it's not my priority right now. It's not, Holy Spirit, the thing you're trying to touch right now, is it important or urgent? <laughs> <laughs> You know, there are a lot of metrics of measuring a lot of things yeah. out there. <laughs> the Holy Spirit tells you, I want you to go, I'll step out and do ABCD. Yeah. But Holy Spirit, but I'm an introvert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but why is, this, why is this applying what? Energy. Yeah. So I'm the one who created you. Mm. Yeah, the one, that's, that branding is yours. Yeah. Not mine. mine. But I'm an introvert. Mm. You know, I need my space. Mm. Holy Spirit. <laughs> he says, now we need to break this mold yeah. so that you can step out because mm. I'm what? Energizing you. Mm. Hey, you yeah, okay, yeah, I understand. Okay, okay, hold your horses. Yeah. But Holy Spirit, I'm a sanguine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy Spirit, you know, yesterday I did my SWOT test. Yeah. Uh, these are my weaknesses. And he laughs. He says, well, actually, your strengths are your weaknesses. Because <laughs> there's a way. <laughs> when, you're, when you're weak, then I'm strong. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying, you see how sometimes we just use some earthly metrics to distance him from the involvement in our lives. He is the one who was there creating you. Are you clear? Yeah. The things you're itemizing and saying, weaknesses, you're saying, ah, I was not even intending to use those ones. Yeah. <laughs> Me, my problem is the strength. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Can I, let me give you, let me give you, let me give you an example. <laughs> okay, guys, on the guys who are outside there in China, <laughs> there's a debate in class. Yeah. There are some sanguines and <laughs> 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 who don't want. Listen, let me show you something. Why does Paul say, and the Spirit of the Lord withstood me. Yeah. Paul is in Thika. He's being withstood. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Why didn't the Spirit of God stop him in Nairobi? Mm. <laughs> so what I'm just saying, I am not against the categorizations of the world. Mm. But those categorizations can easily stick jacket God. Yeah? yeah? Mm -hmm. Me, I am full brain. Well, the day I collaborated with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. I became both right I'm, left brain. I'm full brain. Mm. Full brain. Mm. Full brain. Mm. There are spaces I couldn't go because I was this reserved person. Mm. That's my personality. Mm. Yeah. Until the Holy Spirit mingled with me and his word. See, and I'm, wait, well, now am I praying for boldness? Mm. Yes, you're stepping out in boldness because of what? Mm. Because you have been energized. Yes. The Bible says when the Spirit of the Lord came upon soul, he was like what? Another man. Another man. It's like those who go and wash, look into the mirror and forget what? Their face of Genesis, the face of beginnings. That is your face. So the responsibility of the Spirit of God is to bring you back to recollection. Do you remember before I formed your mother's womb? We conferenced. This is the kind of person you are. Really me? That might be my twin sister. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Don't just use those metrics to street jacket God. He will surprise you. You'll be surprised. Some of you guys will be, you're going to, you're going to surprise us. Mm. We know you here as good, nice, calm people. Mm. <laughs> Let us see next week. Mm. Ah, when you have now mingled and embraced the Holy Spirit. And he has disentangled you from the dance of frustration. <laughs> we'll be teaching here and this dog is just broken. In. <laughs> hi, people. You know, hi, guys. Yeah, hi, guys. Because now you have an interesting spiritual nature. Are we okay? Yes. 
you still want to ask for the question? <laughs> okay. So are we okay? So number three, so three things we notice if we close. Number one, when the presence of God was upon Joseph, he got favor. Mm. Presence, favor. Remember that? Yeah. So this is Joseph. <laughs> there he is, his presence. This is Joseph again. He goes what? Favor. Are you clear? Mm -hmm. When favor came upon Joseph, Joseph became what? Visible. Mm. Clear? Yeah. So there's the presence of God upon Joseph. He gets favor from God. Then he becomes what? Visible. When Joseph becomes visible, things were committed to him. Resources or commitment. Things were committed to him. Responsibility. <laughs> Are you okay with that? Yeah. yeah. It is always the pattern. In Potiphar's house, presence, favor. He was visible. Things were committed to him. Yeah. In uh, Pharaoh's prison, yeah. Yeah, presence, favor, yeah. visibility. Yeah. And Resources. yeah. So the thing is this I know some people could pray for what? Favor. Just entertain what? Presence. No. And then favor will be there. And then it will be visible. And then what? Sources. Okay. <laughs> Are you okay? I think I'll stop there. If I'm not, yeah, I'll stop there. Now, and because of, that is the reason why I wrote this book. The Love of Contradiction. For those who read it, this is the entire, it's a summary. For those who read it, this is, this, yeah. The law of contradiction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the entire story of Joseph and dreams. It's called the law of contradiction. What to do at the crossroads of a shattered dream. Yes. Yeah. So you can see all those things. It's impossible for you to have a dream and not enjoy the presence of God. Mm -hmm. So if you have a dream that is th thriving around what? The framing of the word of God, the nature of God and the working of God. Mm -hmm. It means you're always enjoying God's presence. Mm -hmm. So when you go to Sunday to church, it's not to collect presence. Mm -hmm. It's to do what? To contribute to. Sunday service is a gathering of people who are experiencing these things yeah. Monday to Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Don't put too much burden on your purses to start up the atmosphere. <laughs> no, you're the guys who are supposed to come with what? With the atmosphere. Yeah. It will make it easy for, it will make it work so easy. Yeah. You know, when, when people grow up in this city, pastoring, teaching will become very easy. Mm. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> it will become what? Easy. I have a son and a daughter in the house. I don't have to remind them to go and, go and shower. Yeah. Go and clean yourself. Mm. They know it. Now they're mature. Mm. It's no longer a prayer, a prayer point. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what happens in church. Mm. When people are not taught to grow up, mm. problems. Yeah. Problems. Mm. Mm. <laughs> problems. Where, okay. Where can people get the book? Where can people get the book? Yes. Ah, uh, people can get the book. They can. <laughs> Where can people get the book? <laughs> they come for Bible study. <laughs> I'm doing what? Promoting, I'm making myself visible, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, soft copies? No, I don't, I don't have soft copies right now. Uh, I have physical copies only. Uh, you can email me on the, the, the1714 company at gmail.com and make your order. 650 shillings. And then we'll find a way of what? Getting it to you. Yeah. Yeah. There's this, there's another one called what? Loud driven thinking. Yeah. My best, I think. A big God, small ideas. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've just finished uh, Wisdom. Yeah. Simple, specific solutions. Uh, I'm about to finish what? Uh, the market is spiritual. Yeah. yeah. So those are things that are coming, yeah. Yeah, so there are many books. Order now. Order now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we meet, we meet here at Demi. Uh, United Bible Societies, Demi Road, or Fungong Road, yeah? yeah. Demi Road, every Thursday. Unless advised. Unless advised. Every Thursday at 5 o'clock. If you come here and you don't find us, just pray. <laughs> it's a whole room, conference room, just pray. But I hope this has helped you. Yes. Uh, those who are here, those who are out there, uh, the law of contradiction, <laughs> presence has really been emphasized, is knowing, not just feeling. Yeah. Uh, God's hand is upon you. Yeah. Don't be discouraged if you're experiencing shattered dreams. Those are interesting spaces. Yeah, God wants you to understand. Don't be in the loop of offense. Uh, so we disentangle you from the loop of offense in Jesus' name. Yeah. We pray for everybody who has uh, a dream that God has given, put in your heart. That God, you just use those dreams to be present to them. Show, your, show up yourself strong. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are set up. Set them up in that name of you as Lord. Uh, you see... That you are our Father, you love us, you supply your goodness towards us, you've given us your word, 
your preeminent word is Jesus the Christ, the plumb line. But Jesus has also spoken to us words. We thank you because we are voice activated. So we have heard your voice as the sheep of the Lord. We thank you because your word, where your word is, your work is. And therefore where your work is, is the energy of the Lord that supplies us every other day. So I'm praying for all those who have been discouraged, all those who are feeling like their dreams have been shattered in the name of Jesus, that you pour yourself in them, give them restoration, uh, return unto them the years the locusts have eaten and the years of the canker worms. Above all, just flood them with a baptism of love that comes from a father in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You are the one who has said, even earthly fathers who are evil, they give you good things. How much more the heavenly father mm -hmm. will give you what? The spirit of God. Because the spirit of God is essential in leading us into this journey. Mm -hmm. So we thank you, Lord. For those who have been injured in this journey, we pray, pour your balm of the spirit in their hearts and minds. We disentangle them, my Father, from the loop of the dance of frustration in the name of Jesus. Amen. They are set free now in Jesus' name. Uh, those who are yet to get dreams, Father, we pray that you renew, you restore, you give them new dreams, that they may be able to see that all, it's only you, my Father, who can birth something as impeccable and hopeful, as a promise, as a dream, as a reality that, Lord, they will begin to encounter you on a day-to-day -day basis. So we thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We magnify your holy name. It is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Good. Thank you. Finish. Have we finished?